Thank you, Veronica, for being here today for the interview. So the first question is, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Tell us about your current position and your academic background. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Veronica Knott. I graduated from the mining program at UBC in 2019. Um, I currently work for Rio Tinto at Divec Diamond Mines in the Northwest Territories, and I am a surface production engineer for them. Um, what would be a typical day at work for you as a mining engineer? And I know you mentioned that you're working on a site that is like kind of far away from Vancouver. Could you also elaborate uh, some of your experience? Yeah, for sure. So um, I work a fly-in, fly-out job, uh, which means that I work normally scheduled to work two weeks at a time and then I get two full weeks off. You fly all the way up to like pretty close to the Arctic and then you're up there, you live there. It's like you've got everything, you've got food provided for you, you don't have to cook, you don't have to clean. Um, you get a nice like room with the clothes, like my clothes are already up there, the closet, like it's, it's a pretty luxurious life. A typical day for me, I work we try to hit night shift and day shift. So as a surface production engineer, my main job is to look at operations performance and the plan and try to understand like our costs and why we aren't hitting our numbers and like run initiatives of how do I make these things better and how do I improve things? Um, and so we want to meet with night shift and day shift. So I work about from like six to seven, but I take meals throughout the day. Um, and I just spend a lot of time doing data and numbers and presentations and like working with the crews and getting out in the field and getting out. So I work in the open pit part of Divec. So I'm literally out in like negative 50 degree weather. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> but it's super fun and the people I work with are awesome. And it's just a lot of like problem solving all day. But mm -hmm. my day's a bit, a bit all over the place because I just run a bunch of projects and, and do a bunch of work. That's a lot of commitment to your job. Yeah, but it's it's funny because I love it, right? Like, you, yeah, exactly. You, you don't get tired because you're like, if mm -hmm. you're hanging out with your friends and you're having fun and like you get paid to do it and then you get three weeks off. So like I you get to just be at home and do the things you want to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. What are some of the projects that you are currently working on? A lot of what I do right now is uh, to do with metrics. So that's like Power BI type work. So um, we have dispatch systems that collect a lot of numbers of like what we've done and how we've done it. Um, and so I run a lot of projects that are like, okay, are we hitting the plan? How are we deviating from the plan? Why are we deviating from the plan? So I do coding and SQL and database management um, and then Power BI design and those type of things. That's become a really like core part of, of my job, but I also run like technology projects and mm -hmm. other implementation um, for operations. What stood out to you about uh, mining engineering and what made you decide on pursuing it? I took a really long path to like figure out I wanted to be in mining, but um, I think the thing for mining is I could really understand why I was doing what I was doing. Like I could see it, you know, you design a blast pattern and then you watch the rock get blasted. Like you, there's very clear outcomes of the work that you're doing um, and that you're solving a problem. Like the, how to mine is an overall problem and there's like, like a bunch of little problems in between it, but it was really clear what our end goal was. It's really nice to be like, like when people are like, what did you do today? I'm like, like that blast pattern we're about to blow up, like I designed that or like cool. you, see, you see what you do, right? And that's yeah, like a really exactly. fun part about yeah. it. Next question, in your opinion, what are three habits or skills necessary for highly successful engineers? The first one I think is the most important is like the big picture. So like understanding that um, you can get really technically like focused into like a small part of it, but at the end of the day, what you do is going to have a bigger impact because it's going to go into a bigger system. So understanding what that system is and like how that system grows, that's super important. My second one would have to be communication. The thing that I've learned from working in mining is I can do whatever I want behind my computer. I can build like fancy spreadsheets and like do whatever. But if I don't go talk to people and say, hey, like I did this, can you help me out or like do it? Like nothing's ever going to get done. And you have to kind of like communicate those things and be able to like work with people and right. be friends with people and stuff. The final one would be curiosity. You just have to be curious all the time. You know when a toddler and you're explaining something to them and they'll always go, but why? But why? But like that's basically what an engineer needs to be. Like when you have a problem, you ask why five times. And the, so you have to come up with five different reasons why. And that mm -hmm. often helps you figure out what the core issue actually is. 
Um, and so that's what I would say is that, like, if you're curious and you always want to know more, that's like the best trait for engineers for sure. Great. Those are great answers. What's the next question? What has been the most valuable or most memorable event that happened over the course of your career? I mean, there's been so many. I've had some really great internships. Like I was working at, in Mexico. Um, uh -huh. And so I was working in Spanish, and so I had to learn Spanish. I didn't speak a word of Spanish. I <laughs> right. and they were so nice to me, and everybody was just so friendly, and like they helped me out and stuff. Um, but I'd been there about six months, and I did a safety share in Spanish, and it was like terrible, I'm sure. <laughs> but everybody in the team was super supportive, and they like helped me out, and um, you know, I got to practice my Spanish and practice all that, and it was like it's just a memorable moment of like the teamwork that you can get places, mm -hmm. and like the friends you get, and like learning skills that you never would have expected. Like, I think a lot of the mining stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, but other skills that you learn, like like a whole new language is something that I just never expected. And I'm like, so grateful I had that opportunity. What were some of the challenges in deciding your career path? Did your goals or plans change during your studies or once you had started your career? So I started in materials engineering and I ended up in mining. It took me a lot of time to figure out what I really wanted to do and I'm really grateful that I didn't rush it and I actually went back to school for what I was kind of more interested in um, because materials was an awesome degree and I could see a lot of people being passionate about it but I realized like I wasn't. I'm really grateful I went back. It took me a lot longer obviously to finish school but when I got out of school I was already in an industry I loved and so I didn't have to you know change jobs or anything it was like the first job I got I loved and that's super beneficial because I feel like that's really set me up um and it, it all it took was time like it, it wasn't anything to do I could have done differently I guess it was just I had to know myself and know what my passions were um and that's like the thing that I always say to first years is like go to every open house like you actually never know what you're going to be into because I grew up in downtown Toronto like mining was not an option like in my brain or anything <laughs> Totally. And another great takeaway from your experience is that don't be afraid to change when you think you like other things. So just make a move and change. So now let's move on to talk about your experience as an undergrad student. What was your most memorable university experience? I was heavily involved with the US, um, like I was president and everything. Um, and so the most memorable moment is in E Week. Like, it, there's a those opening ceremonies for E Week, and everybody's crammed into the ESC. And there's people on the balconies, and you just have people like cheering their faculty on, and they're so proud to be there. Mm -hmm. And you have this unbelievable sense of community. And I think that community is similar to like Imagine Day and all these other things, right? But knowing that you're part of a faculty in something, that was what the EOS gave me. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger students, though, what would it be? Always value networking. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, if I get really good grades and then I apply online with good resumes, like I'm, I'm obviously going to get the job. Sadly, like that's not how it works, right? It, a lot of what works is, oh, I know this person through social networks or networking and they're a great candidate and you get put on the top of the list. Every other role I've gotten, internships, grads, everything, um, was through people who knew me, recommending me for the role or knowing the recruiter, standing out on LinkedIn, I had to be 100% worth it for my career and my like development and all those things for sure. The second one is to have fun. University's fun and I have some <laughs> great friends and I had tons of fun doing it and and I think I learned a lot more about my like myself through right. that. Next question is just a conclusion. What is your favorite part about being an engineer? I think it, it's a lot to do with problem solving. Like it's just fun. Like it's a challenge. Every day I don't really know what my job's gonna be, but I know I'm gonna have to solve some type of problem. Like and especially in an operations setting when you're like on the ground and people are doing stuff, like the stuff you have to adapt to and change is is the fun part is that like I'll go in for a set and come back and be like oh that was wild like I did so many cool things or like tried different things out that I never thought I'd get to try um, because that's what the operation needs and then that's what you get to do uh, and that's the part I really love about being an engineer it it's really scary sometimes when you tell people like hey I go up to like negative 50 weather and yeah. whatever but then when you start describing like the friends you make and the people you hang out with and the job opportunities you get like that's that's awesome, right? And that makes up for all of it. And it, it's tough to leave home. It always is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you know you're going to go do something that you like, that that makes it a lot better. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today.